Right, right there you are. Right. Hey guys, Jim Chester here. I have Dr. Deed Harrison here with me from CBP, and we're going to talk a little bit about his uh, his uh, time on stage today. And we'll before we jump into it, let's say a couple nice things to Paul and Dr. Paul Reed for putting on this event out here in Vancouver, Washington. Oh, absolutely, Dr. Paul Reed and his team. Uh, I believe this is like the ninth year for them doing Cairo Fest, and it's so cool to see this event grow. You know, it was set up to be on chiropractic's birthday, right? And it's a huge deal for the profession to gather around science, philosophy, and art, like-minded people coming together. It's just awesome that Paul does this and the support and the love that he gets, but also that he gives out to people as well. So I, I'm just so honored to be here with uh, Dr. Paul and his team. And I saw your name that was going to be on like the speaker's like schedule, and I was like, wow, Dean's going to be there. I love that guy. So let's just tell me, tell everybody out there that didn't get to 2019 Cairo Fest yeah. a little bit of a, a taste and nibble, if you will, about what you talked about on stage today. All right. Hey, uh, this is my third time speaking for Paul. And uh, th this time he said, hey, Deed, no rehashing. You've got to bring something new. And, you know, sometimes that's hard to do, seriously, but with the research that I do, Sometimes it can actually be nice and easy because there's always some unpublished data that I have that my team and I have done. And so this year what I decided to talk about was not just the neck curve, but the impact that improving the cervical spine alignment in the sagittal plane, what impact does that have on the central, peripheral, and autonomic nervous system? And thanks to my colleagues, I, I just really have to shout out to my research colleagues uh, over at Cairo University, Cairo, Egypt, and the University of Sharhar in uh, the UAE. Uh, my colleagues over there that I work with, they're just phenomenal. And what we did is we designed a randomized trial to test what happens to the autonomic nervous system functionality when you restore an abnormal cervical curve. And so number one, we defined what an abnormal cervical curve is with our past data. We included people that fit that. We took x-rays, even though x-rays considered a no-no now, right? But we actually took the x-rays, we measured the x-rays, quantified the spine displacement, we rehabilitated the shape of the spine in one group, and in another group we did standard care, and then we documented differences, and what we found was huge changes in autonomic nervous system activity, such that when you restore the, the alignment of the spine, we're quieting down the sympathetic nervous system's uh, amplitude and excitability. Uh, so to my knowledge, it's the first time anybody did that, and I presented that on behalf of my team here at ChiroFest. So what does it mean for you? Because I know a lot of people are like, well, what is an ideal curve and how do you get there? And what, what, are, what are they doing with this biophysics thing? So let's kind of just give them the nuts and bolts of why chiropractic biophysics has so much integral resonance with the profession of chiropractic. Yeah, that, that's great. And thanks for the question, Jim. The, uh, the issue is my dad first laid out, my late father, Dr. Don Harrison, in the 1970s and 80s. He said, how can we talk about subluxation? if we don't even know what a normal spine is. And so as a mathematician and an engineer scientist, he looked at that and said, you know what, let's take a step back, let's identify, can we model what an ideal or optimum spine is in the sagittal plane? And the answer was, yes, we can, and we did, and we modeled what the average adult spine should look like. And then we came along later and we filled in the pieces, well, what are the ranges for an adult human spine to be within in the sagittal plane? And we did it full spine. We did neck, rib cage, and low back. And today, we have normative data that we can compare somebody against and somebody to, and it's no different than doing heart rate, heart rate variability, blood pressure, blood sugar, and we, we can say, hey, you're either within normal limits or you're not. And if you're not within normal limits, in chiropractic, we call that, yeah, the S word, not the four-letter one, but the 11-letter one, subluxation. Somebody checked my numbers there. I think it's 11. And what we do is we say, you're subluxated. We need to do something about this because there's health consequences. And then CBP technique, chiropractic biophysics, we're, we're based on a concept called mirror image. And we rehabilitate the shape of the spine using mirror image exercise, adjusting, and traction. And then we measure and document people's outcomes, whether it's pain, disability, and function and that's the essence of CBP and why we have to start with a normal model otherwise you don't know what you're basing engaging things against right
Well, and, and just like kind of a bromance here with uh, Deed, I, I watched every video this man ever made about 10 years ago, and then I had a chance to actually interview you six years ago at Cairo Fest, which was actually in Seattle at the time. Yep. Now it's in Vancouver, Washington, and over that time, I've just gotten to know you better. I've watched the world that you touch, and what you do is so much, there's so much validation involved when it comes to the big other S word, which is science. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I know that yeah. this professor sometimes struggles with the validation of science so why is CBP so important for the validation of science that's a great question and to me first of all I, I just have to say I'm, I'm so blessed and honored to be in the position that I'm in because of Amen, brother yeah, thank you be, because of my my late father his team and then now my team and you know I, I'm the tip of the spear I'm not the whole spear and I'm not the staff behind it and so I've got a great team uh, but, but the scientific side of it, you're right, like chiropractic is science, philosophy, and art, and too often part of the profession ignores one or more of the parts. And this is no different from the science side of it, we ignore the philosophy side of it, or we ignore the technique, the art side of it. Y you can't do it, the three legs are needed, otherwise you fall over when you sit down, which is a fun bar joke, but it's not great for a healthcare, right? So th for me, the science was always the ground of am I doing the right thing for this person? Because I'm a doctor, somebody's putting their health in my hands. And so the research was, to me, of utmost importance. It, it identifies, are we on the right track or do we need to change what we're doing? And the good news is we found out that we're on the right track. When we correct the spine, we get proper changes in biomechanics, function, and now neurophysiology, thanks to my team and, and uh, myself, our research. And see, that's just what it's all about, guys. It's about supporting the beautiful profession of chiropractic, but giving you legs to stand on. And I think that sometimes, like you're saying, so many angles are misconstrued, and they say, well, I'm a great adjuster. Well, how's the outcome? Right. Well, I, I have great philosophy. Well, how many green books did you read? Right. Well, I, I went to a chiropractic college. Well, which one did you go to? Yeah. Were they philosophically sound? What, how many adjustments did you have to do to clear your, your thing? And I know you've had to pass boards to become a doctor, but what are you doing after? that and I know you do this great thing with this postgraduate program for CBP let's talk about that and then we'll jump a little bit further into the idea around uh, this event that you have coming up in uh, Phoenix which is a CBP annual okay hey thanks a lot Jim the the uh, thing with the, the CBP diplomate uh, the research that we've done historically in the last 25 to 30 years in CBP technique has culminated today in this amazing program that we have through the ICA and myself and it's really called the CBP Diplomate and CBP in this case stands for Clinical Biomechanics of Posture. It's the Diplomate that we put together with the ICA. Uh, because of CBP's 240 peer-reviewed research publications, the ICA uh, got together with their board and they said, yep, we uh, agree that th this deserves recognition and we want to train our doctors in this cutting-edge science, philosophy, and art program to where you can learn the, you know, the cutting-edge biomechanics and the technique applications that we do. So we actually have a 420-hour program. Uh, and if you want more information on that, you can reach out to me personally or you can contact the ICA. And it's launching this year. Uh, and we'll have a proper website and everything done so you can do some courses and you can do some online training. And then uh, that jumps us into my annual program, which is... Uh, part of the ICA Diplomate. It's one course that you have to take. You don't have to take every year, but you have to take one annual event. And we hold it every October. Uh, this year it's October 11th through the 13th down in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's our big event for the year where CBP doctors uh, tried and true. And then new people come to the event to see what it's all about. And uh, we present you know, great cases. Uh, we present our uh, updates to our technique, but we also present new cutting edge research. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you for sharing with our audience today. You're so valuable, this profession. So thank you for all the work that you do and all the dots that you help connect, and not only in the spine, but in the profession. And I uh, just want to say thank you to Local Gold. You can see the logo over my shoulder. Maybe I'll duck, but you go to Local Gold. And uh, if you guys need any... Uh, uh, help doing any online presence, websites, and marketing, reach out to Natalie over there. And uh, I'm with Cairo Hustle, and I'm going to close out with you guys right now and say you guys are just one story away. Keep hustling. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much, guys.